Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God guide video. Now, usually whenever I make guide videos, it's about characters, items, weapons, comparisons, stuff like that. But recently, my video, Godland's Guide for Beginners, actually got quite a few views and was quite popular among you guys. So that kind of hinted to me that new players really do care whenever I make videos solely specific for new players. And I decided that I would do more videos for the new player. So that's why today I'm going to be doing a full overview on Oryx and O2, Oryx's castle, how to do it, my pro the pros and cons, my tips and strategies, my personal opinion, everything there is to know about Oryx. I'm going to let you guys know. Let's get started. Alright, so first off, I have to inform you guys on what Oryx exactly is, and how do you get to his chamber, his dungeon. So in a realm, there is a certain number of set-piece bosses and event gods that Oryx spawns in the realm. Once you kill them all, he will say, you know, you impudent fools or whatever, uh, you will suffer, you know, stuff like that. He'll give his little monologue and say that the realm is closed, meaning no one from the outside world in the Nexus can enter the realm. And in around two minutes later, the realm will start to shake, and everybody within the realm will be teleported instantly to Oryx's castle. Now, upon spawnage, there are four different places that you can be. Left, right, mid-left, and mid-right. Now, there's really no difference between rooms exactly, everything is structured pretty much the same, but depending on what lane you're in, the direction that you take to go into the courtyard will be directioned different. It's not a big deal, but it's still nice to know. Alright, now let's actually talk about the rooms. So, in Oryx's castle, at first you'll start out on the bridge. Now, there are two barriers that you need to break down, and as soon as you do, you will be greeted by Oryx minions, one of which do high damage and shoot from their core, like the Goblin Mage, meaning if they sit on you, you will take massive damage. If you're unmaxed, say a wizard or something, 0-8, these guys can kill you if they gang up on you, so don't take them too lightly. That doesn't mean be afraid and run away, but it does mean be cautious. The other type of enemy that you're going to be meeting are these guys. Now, they're not as scary as the previous bunch, but they can deal a lot of damage, mainly because they can slow you. They will start to gang up on you and attack you, and you'll be too slow to evade their attacks, so you'll keep on getting hit. That's their strategy. Now it's time for you to figure out yours. Another sub-enemy that you're going to be dealing with is the Living Floor, Oryx's Living Floor, a big eyeball on the ground that shoots out these shuriken-looking orange and red shurikens. These little sprites, these textures, and if they touch you, you will become quieted, meaning your mana goes down to zero and you cannot regenerate mana for a short duration. They only do about, well, upon me, because I'm max, I, they do about one damage. However, there are times whenever someone has died to them. If you get attacked by enemies, you get down to blinking red, and you walk over the living floor, it can pop you. Especially if you're a 0-8 character. It's a very horrible death, it's sad, and it's almost embarrassing, but it does happen, and it has happened, and it can happen. But it's up to you to make sure that it doesn't happen. Now with all of that information in mind... Heed my warning whenever I say, there is an enemy within the first room that is the most scary and strongest within the entire castle. Of course, I'm talking about the Brute of Oryx. This guy has killed so many people so many times solely because of his ability to armor break you. If you walk over him, which I have done as a 6-8 knight, he will not only armor break you, but every last one of his shots that hasn't hit you will hit you because you're standing right on top of him. You will die. This is why Owen's Castle is still very formidable. No matter how good you are at the game, no matter how much HP you have, no matter how high of defense you have, no matter how good your pet is, you will still die. And that's why you need to be cautious. Now don't think that I'm trying to scare you guys. Okay, maybe I'm a little bit. But I'm not trying to scare you to the point where you don't want to go to Oryx. I'm scaring you to the point where you want to try harder, and you don't want to die, and you want to be cautious because you're afraid of dying. That's pretty much the whole point of permadeath. It's meant to scare you, so that way you play better and don't die. Because you know if you do die, you lose everything. So just remember, when you see that brute, heed my warning and stay clear. So once you've made it past the first room, you'll enter a wide hallway, full of more Oryx warriors and knights of Oryx. Now since you've dealt with these guys in the previous room, it shouldn't be too much trouble to get by these guys a second time. However, it's in the next room once you break down the barrier, that things get a little bit scary. It's in this room that you are greeted by the one and only Commander 
of Oryx. Now, the location of where the commander spawns is quite random. Sometimes he's in the middle of the room, sometimes he's there as soon as you break down the barrier, or sometimes he's all the way at the last barrier at the end of the room. The first thing that you're going to notice as soon as you see him is that he's standing stationary, and he is surrounded by insect minions. Now, unlike the brute, the commander does not charge at you. However, there is one slight difference. These insect minions can pop you. At first, they start out their brown-beige color, but once you get too close to them and you start attacking, they will turn red and charge after you and just go ballistic. And some of them will actually explode on top of you. And what does the commander do after that? Spawns more insect minions. It's a never-ending army. I don't recommend fighting him if you don't have at least five people with you. If you're unmaxed, of course. So how do you get around him? If you can't fight the commander of Oryx, similar to the brute, how do you get around him? Well, with the brute, you wait for him to charge after you, since he's a very aggroed enemy. He'll come after you, and you use that interval of time to go around him and escape to the next room. But the commander of Oryx does not move. He doesn't chase after you. He just kind of wobbles back and forth. Hey, look at me. But he doesn't travel a large distance over a short period of time. Instead, his insect minions come after you, and they just blow up, and they just rip you apart. My personal strategy whenever I play on an NPE or something, or an unmaxed character, is that I wait for the insects to cool down. Once they go into their rage, whenever they turn red, you wait for them to turn back to their regular color, and that way they will not pop you, and they won't start shooting everything out all crazy. Another good way to avoid them is to make sure that you're with a group. Always run with a group. Run around people, because then you're not the only target, and chances are, you probably won't get hit. If you're the only one there, you have a 100% chance of being targeted. If there's five people, now it's a 20% chance. Just the more the merrier. While you're doing this though, make sure that you see the barrier at the end of the room already starting to be broken, or maybe it already is broken, or at least has a dent in it. Because if you get up to that barrier, and you start hammering it away, the insect minions might come after you. So, we don't want that. Now, this third room is probably the most scary. Why? Because as soon as you break down the barrier, not only are you worrying about the insect commander coming at you from behind, but as soon as you break down this barrier, a brute is already awaiting you. Plus, there's tons of warriors of Oryx and knights of Oryx there to slow you down and get attacked by the brute. It's a death zone. Only if you're maxed can you run past the brute and quickly break down the next barrier to enter the courtyard. But if you're unmaxed, this is all almost an impossible feat. You need people. Unless you want to take 7 billion years to clear the room, you could do that. Or go with a group, take everything down, get an archer to paralyze the brute or something. Do whatever it takes, but this is probably going to be the toughest room so far. Once you've gotten this far, which honestly, it's probably not even going to be that hard. I'm over-exaggerating as if you're alone doing this and you're all new and you're all confused. Where am I? What am I doing? It's not what it's going to be like. You guys know what Oryx is. You, you know what to do, pretty much. I'm just trying to make it a little simpler and explain everything to you. God, I hope I'm not scaring anyone. I'm just trying to... Just, come on, I'm just trying to do a show here. Anyway, once you get past all three rooms, you finally enter the courtyard. And, lo and behold, you're greeted by two brutes right off the bat. Now, here, this is something that really does come with experience. I'm going to teach you guys how to break your fear of the brute that I actually created because I made them sound like they were freaking gods of disaster. They're not. Whenever you enter the courtyard, notice how I just run. I don't even hesitate because I know that the brutes aren't going to come after me. If you wait for the brute to come after you and you just stand still, yeah, he's going to get you. But if you just run around him... He's not like the end god. He cannot predict your movements. He'll always be one step too slow. If you just run past him, they're not going to get you. Honestly, the scariest part about the courtyard is getting slowed by the Knights of Oryx because then the Brutes might be able to catch up with you. But even then, it's a big if. It's once you get past the Brutes and enter the bridge to the Stone Guardian Battle Arena where I see the most deaths in O1. Seriously, the most of any other place in O1 People always die on this bridge, and it's because of one specific reason, and I'm going to explain that in depth. Once you approach the beginning of the bridge, there is a huge barrier, and what is guarding that barrier? A whole bunch of quiet bombs, a brute, warriors of Oryx, and knights of Oryx. Oh god, why, oh god. Now, if you haven't already figured it out, why do you think that so many people die here? Alright, let's see. There is a brute guarding the entrance, which you have to run up to to break. If you're a melee, this is what I see a lot, there's always people running up trying to destroy the barrier as quick as possible. And once they do that, the brute then sees them, oh, yes, and he runs after him, corners him between the wall and the brute so you have nowhere to go but either to the wall or the brute, and you get cornered and you die because he armor breaks you, and like I said, he can pop you. 
that's a big mistake. Don't be the only one running. The only time that you should run to destroy that gate as fast as you can is if the brute's been distracted and he ran away. Which does happen a lot, and that's pretty much the main strategy to get, to get around him. Like I said before, distract the brute. Make him charge you so that way you go around him to go to your exit. But it doesn't end there. Remember whenever I said that there are quiet bombs? Yeah, you're gonna get quieted because people rush the thing and they don't destroy the quiet bombs, so... Once you're quieted, you have no mana, meaning no stuns, no invincibility from Oreo, no spell bomb for DPS. All you have is your weapon to kill stuff and your death to survive. Nothing else. No ability. No mana. So once you break down the barrier and you enter the bridge, there's another commander of Oryx. Oh god. Why? Oh god. Now, like I said my, for my previous strategy, you just gotta run past him. Wait for his aggroed insects to kind of die down and then just go past him. However, while you're waiting for this to happen, you need to make sure that the brute from the previous room doesn't run through the hole that you created. That's why making a one block wide hole is usually the best choice, but that doesn't always happen. And the brute can run back and kill people because he runs up, and he runs up to the bridge. It happens, so just, you know, be careful about that. It's such a double-edged sword with the bridge, because if you go too fast, you might die from the commander. If you go too slow, the brute might come back and kill you. Or the minions might kill you. If you run up and try to destroy the barrier too quickly, the minions might kill you. Or you might kill the insect commander, but then you have such low HP, and then the minions kill you. There's so much that can happen on this bridge, and that's why everyone dies. There's a balance. You can't go too fast or too slow. If you're maxed, though, this uh, this pretty much, you know, my ideas are completely thrown out the window once that happens. Because rushing Owen's castle is not difficult if you have, like, a knight. Okay, then it's easy. But for unmaxed players, it is very scary. It was very scary for me the first time I ever went to Oryx. Even now, on my PPE, I can die. I can die very easily if I just walk over that insect. It's not good. It's not good. But that's why I'm here. I want to teach you guys, and I want you guys to get better. Okay. Man, I'm out of breath. Once you get past this bridge, you now can enter the battle of the Stone Guardians. There is a left and a right Stone Guardian, there's a purple and a red one. They both have incredible amounts of HP and 100 death each. Wow. But these guys are nowhere near as scary as the minions that run around the castle. Why? Because they are not drawn aggro to you. The only time they ever chase you is whenever they go into one of their phases, which I there isn't a name for, so... Yeah, and even whenever they do chase after you, as long as you run backwards away from them, they can't hit you. To be honest, the scariest thing in the entire Stone Guardian battle is the haunted armor that runs around and follows you, because they shoot a lot, and they damage you, and they heal themselves, and they have a lot of HP, and you can't really kill them because it's a waste of time. You want to focus the Stone Guardians, but you also have to worry about the haunted armor hitting you. It's multitasking, but it's nowhere near as bad as the bridge. That's for sure. Anyway, you fight the two Stone Guardians, you beat them, it's a pretty self-explanatory fight, there's nothing really scary about it. The only thing that you really have to worry about is that whenever one of the Stone Guardians dies, it will turn invincible and shoot the Stone Sword into the middle of the room, and that Stone Sword will continue to shoot out paralyzed bullets. So, if you're standing in the center of the room and he throws the sword on you, you will continue to be paralyzed and continue to take massive damage, so you will die. And since you can't teleport in Oryx's chamber, you pretty much are either dead or you nexus. So don't stand in the middle of the room. All right, now for the moment that you've all been waiting for. I've described everything there is to know about the castle, the stone guardians. Once you defeat them, you enter Oryx's chamber. As soon as you enter, you notice I'm, you're in the corner of the room, you run to the center, boom! Oh god, it's Oryx! <sighs> the first thing that I have to say to you is that if you have a laggy computer and you approach Oryx, I wish you good luck, sir. First of all, Oryx is like the king of phases. I mean, seriously, look at all these friggin' things. How am I- what? I mean, you got Minions 1, Minions 2, Artifacts, Dance 1, Dance 2, Universe, Days, Gaze, Chase, Rage. I'm done. Yeah, I'm freaking done. You know what? I'm free. I'm done. I'm briefly going to explain Oryx's phases, mainly because he rarely ever goes into all of them. He dies so quick because there's so many people, it doesn't even matter. If he does go into a phase, though, just back out. If you're a wizard, you have range. You don't have to get that close. Spellbombing's OP. Go for it. But if you're a melee, that's where phases like the dancing gets really difficult, and that's why I don't recommend fighting him whenever you're unmaxed. Keep your distance and just wait. Now, you might be wondering, well, if I stand back and wait, I'm ruining my chances of getting DPS in. Buddy, look, if Oryx is going into a phase, chances are there's not enough people to kill him that quickly which means you'll get another chance to get DPS in. Don't worry about it. 
Plus, you'll get better with it as experience goes on. Experience is a huge factor in fighting orcs, by the way. You can't just be good at it the first try. You're going to die a couple times, but you're going to get better. That's what this game's all about. Trial and error. I cannot emphasize that enough. In my opinion, the most dangerous phases, besides dancing, is gaze, chase, and rage. Mainly because these are so rapid and almost unavoidable. With gaze, he says, All who looks upon my face shall die. So he stands still and fires two enormous white bullets, each dealing about 300 damage each. If you're 0-8 and a wizard and you take both of them, you're dead. That's really dangerous. You need to be careful around that. So if he says, all the look upon my face shall die, stand clear. The other phase is chase, where he says, you will fear me. Fools, flee while you can. Yes, run for your worthless lives. You shall never see the light of day. If he says any of those things, he's going to start running after you. And this is scary because if he runs after you and you're not fast enough to evade him, his shotgun will get you. So please keep your distance. That's why these are the hardest, because he chases after you. So try not to get too close to him. Even if you think he's running the opposite direction, he could easily change direction and come after you. Always keep a, a fixed distance away from him. The last and final phase of Oryx is Rage, where he screams, Enough! I have had enough of you! Die! This is where he turns red and turns huge and chases after whoever may attack him. This is also where he summons his minions of Oryx, which slow you, by the way, and the assassin of Oryx, which is the most deadly Oryx minion, I think, because they are very quick, like an assassin, and they just take you out. They walk over you, boom, dead. I lost a, I think it was only like a 2-8 wizard. It was death, though. I had about 300 health, an assassin walked over me, and it popped me. So that's why doing Oryx with a group is almost essential for a new player. Even if it's a group of new players, it's still better than being alone. But once you kill Oryx, you collect your rewards. But wait, what's this? Wine cellar locked? What the freak is that? The first time that I found out about this locked wine cellar, I asked around and eventually was told that there was an Oryx the Mad God too. Oh my god. So basically, the lore behind this, if you will, Oryx gets defeated and he drinks a whole bunch of wine to get powerful, more powerful than ever actually, gets all of his health back, lurks in the wine cellar, and we have to go inside to take him down once and for all. But how do you get into the wine cellar exactly? Well, there's this trusty little item known as a wine cellar incantation, which drops from every dungeon. Every high-level dungeon, I should say. Sorry, Pirate Cave and Spider Den. And once you pop the Wine Cellar incantation, the Wine Cellar opens up, and everybody has a chance to get one of the beautiful, beautiful items that we've all come to know as Wine Cellar Tops, which they're selling in the Nexus for real money. What's become of this country? Ugh. I don't know about you, but I am not in the mood to talk about the Wine Cellar right now. This took a lot more time than expected. So I'm going to have to save this for another time. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Leave a comment for what you want me to talk about next. If you enjoyed the video, what kind of recommendations you have for me. All right. See you.